Hi. Hey. This is our commentary. It's specifically developed for those of you who wanted to be able to read the commentary in your head at the same time as reading it out loud. Since it's not perfectly synchronized, we're going to start and we'll sometimes describe what's, um, happening as it's going on, but if it's a little bit out of sync that's kinda okay. Yeah, it's as if you're walking in our shoes through the world as we see it. So, we started writing this commentary at, um, the beginning of 2009 when we were asked to write something. So this bit ended up being a very last minute addition to this commentary. I don't think it was in the version that what we first proposed. Nope. In fact we only decided to work with each other pretty late in the day, mainly since we worked together on our previous commentary. So it's a co-write. It's coming at a critical juncture in history, so it was important to get the right people involved. Yeah. The team will always have ramifications, which we, of course, know is inevitable. We wanted to be clear about who was facilitating and who was actually writing. I asked my ghostwriter and former assistant to play me since I wanted to actually appear as myself in the commentary rather than as just a character. And he was gracious enough to agree. I think I got it just about right. The feedback from the readers and the Q&A we had on the last commentary well, the reaction was phenomenal, just outstanding. It was beautiful. Be sure to be involved, and take this information back to your local communities. This has to get out, I remembered that one in particular. I think it's valid. Yeah? Kinda reminds me of the geeky one from Scooby-Doo. Yeah, but I can see already that there's a tendency to draw out the strengths of the last commentary rather than get on with this one. This is starting to develop all the hallmarks of a clunky bit of prose. The introduction of the second character's health problems is always something that I'd wanted to happen earlier on. I wasn't so keen on that. It's all a bit casualty. Let's leave it for now. It's sad this bit here. One of those tiny tin moments. We were always going to edit the sentence, but we never did. Now it's really grown on me. This was the last bit of the commentary to have the words written. I don't mind that really. This bit was always the hardest. One bit like this nearly cost the publisher his house last time. It was tough. He'd been working with all the greats. Chris Evans, Eddie Murphy, Pat Buchanan, Phil Collins. At this point he was putting his home on the market to finance the commentary. The investors he'd been working with weren't very happy. You did this bit, but I think I took it out. The words were changed here. It used to say, as we know, later in the text we read these exact same words but now it's in this section that what we see many of the motifs, like, being planted, seeding what's to come later. It builds up suspense and promises what we will see later in flashback. We can't take it all as actually what what we said. It's filtered through memory. I always wanted to change it because I think commentaries are really more about fantasies than facts. Always. I'm always careful not to introduce any spoilers, so I hope, if you're reading this, A, for the first time that you've actually read it before. Oh yeah, I mean I suppose it's only then that everything would slot into place. But, sure, we started with this then everything else came afterwards. God. We spent ages writing this bit, even though it was very simple. Very uplifting this. I'm down with this. Good bit this. Ah, uh, I'm not so convinced. It was meant to be a commentary about observations, but I was worried it was too banal. Notice where this is, the same spot we see later where something horrible happens. Yeah, it kinda ties the two storylines together. But, um, but perhaps this is a bit too dry. It's a tough juncture, but I think that, right here, this is just a great line. Look at the way it reads. I don't think it would read in quite the same way if it were published somewhere else. I think it's a beautiful passage. A remarkable skill. I like this change of tone. It's less polemical. I had to fight to have this bit in here. Oh yeah, I like this bit. It's gorgeous. You done a great job. I figured I didn't have a great vocabulary when I was writing this, 
Just one or two words that were kinda important to me, and this is one of them. Usually those words, though, never make it, when the writer tries to get across his ideas. The inspirational words are almost never in there. I was so embarrassed writing it because I was worried that someone might read it. Maybe the words aren't so important. Wouldn't it be great if, at any time, we could hear and see great artisans thinking about their craft? When we did our first commentary there were, like, tens, even thousands of details embedded in my ideas which I knew about, maybe the rest of my team knew about, but which were essentially invisible to the world at large. The commentary didn't even scrape the surface. Wouldn't it be amazing to make all of that thought available instantly to anyone anywhere? Constantly? I'm sure that that's easy to do. You just got to ask yourself why it hasn't happened. There's too much at stake for the second character. What would they do if everything they ever thought about was all streamed live? Their work would vanish overnight. I guess so. There'd be no room for professional commentary. It makes me apprehensive. I mean how else could someone confirm the suspicion that the commentary on Ronald Haver talking about King Kong is an homage to the way Ronald Haver introduced his commentary on King Kong if they weren't able to listen to the commentary on Ronald Haver talking about King Kong? I guess, although we want to tie together the seemingly incomprehensible elements of this commentary, at the same time, we're not trying to give the only reading, the only possible interpretation. We're just trying to help you if you've been confused. There are a lot of people who are trying to put this together and still having difficulty. At first you can't tell what the hell you're reading, then it pulls back and you can tell that it's a commentary that suggests interpretation. But it's not an obvious homage. What we're suggesting is that much of what we're reading here is just made up. Actually what's interesting is it's the opposite of cause and effect. It's like the opposite of a plot. Normally, as we know, later in the text we read these exact same words. But here it's different, it's exceedingly difficult. It's not just filler. It's not linear. It's an intense feeling, an experience, rather than a moment. This reminds me of something we said earlier on in this commentary. I'm not sure what exactly, but it's very familiar. It takes place in a very similar context. It's building up something that resembles, ah, the kind of commentaries we know, rather than the ones we really like to hear. You've made that comparison before. It's not allegorical, but the structure of this text, when you look at it, hopefully makes a lot of sense. It's audacious to include it here, I think. I actually wouldn't know how to do crack. Me neither. Which is why this moment is so believable to me. We probably rewrote this bit more than any other bit. I think it's a case of over-interpretation. We've been here already. It doesn't hold up so well, but let's get into that later. The effect is lost here, it doesn't read or scan so well. But it can't always can it? I feel we have to confront this just to make sure it's the case. This remains one of the most interesting subtexts of this commentary. It's an abstraction perhaps, maybe the unknown. The way the characters get split up and then end up becoming practically the same people. I think I nicked that bit. It's a quote I think. It gives it more emotional weight. I can see the effect it has. I'm really happy with it. I think you did a great job. We should probably get back to the key themes. This is getting like some horrible hospital drama. Sure.